Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted, given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of de Richet's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come, take a seat, my friend. S sir, I understand your eagerness, but the pressure on my family complicates the task. Relax, my friend. Your relatives will soon be huh. safe. So what I saw in my vision really did happen. <sighs> well, I hope I haven't missed anything important. I thank you so much. Don't mention it. Now that's settled, let us speak about your support. Yes. You mentioned earlier some assistance from the Golden Order? Absolutely. I have concluded an agreement with their leader, Lady Sarah Faustine de Richet. Another case that Mother didn't tell me about. The funds from the Order will finance the building of a foundry in Tuscany. You will soon be able to count on a hundred or more cannons for your future campaigns. I... Uh, I was not expecting so much help from you. Uh, when can I meet this uh, de Richet? Well, unfortunately, something has cropped up. De Richet has disappeared. Disappeared? What? Here? Yes, but the staff are redoubling efforts to find her, I assure you. So, the agreement, is it on or off? It is on. Her right-hand man has just arrived here to help us find her. And it is none other than her son, Louis Maurras de Richet. I wager he will ensure his mother's commitments are met. Louis, not an easy name to live with in these times. Uh, of course. But from now on, you will deal with him. This man, it can only be Mortimer. Very well. I will seek him out. Ma'am. That was a close call. When you see Louis, Speak to him about the amount of our agreement. And um, how much exactly are we talking about? 20,000 Louis d'Or. A sum that will enable you to easily win your next conquests. My friend, an unparalleled destiny awaits you in France. That is very flattering. However, is 20,000 Louis d'Or enough to purchase so many cannons? In this case, yes. Madame de Richet and I have negotiated a very good price. Very well. You can count on me to talk with her son. Perfect. Remember that great things can be achieved with him on your side. Of course. Anything else? Not for now. Try to get some rest. The next few days are likely to be tiring. Then, sir, I bid you a good evening. Good evening, my friend. It's time to leave. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision.
The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Paoli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. My dearest son, it's a beautiful weapon. Levy Damask Blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. The Battle of Alexander at Issus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius. Yet another one with delusions of grandeur. Amber. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. Person Getterix throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar by Royer, two great army chiefs. A ruble. Hannibal crossing the Alps, another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my room and he gets victory after victory? Friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. <laughs> Who does not know of her, sir? Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. 
I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my oh friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favourite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. What do you think of Volner? The Prussian king is his puppet. I find it hard to believe the king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. I see. Show us your have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> Mortimer is arranged to keep his family out of the harmful reach of Corsican monarchists. Hmm. Interesting. And that's not all. Mortimer and my mother have apparently agreed to deliver cannons to this Bonaparte. What? Since when does the order finance wars? Are you sure? Unfortunately, yes. And the fact you didn't know my mother made this agreement makes it even stranger. Thank you, Louis. At least you have taught me something. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Don't trouble yourself. What are you doing out there? And why he wants to... Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'Or for 200 cannon. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. 
And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richie, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it'd be worth today. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and His Eminence Piaget as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and His Eminence Piaget as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, oh, couldn't think straight. So I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. Not really, no. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. 
Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Were you able to recognize the Prowler? Unfortunately not, no. It was dark, and Lord Mortimer was waiting for me. I was not really paying attention anyway. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Meaning? This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. He's undeserved titles. More than ten in just four years. And each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. I'm sure that a soldier such as yourself is not interested in vulgar rumors. Quite right. If only this cursed gossip didn't come to stain the uniform he has the audacity to wear. Don't you find him worthy? But how could he be, Monsieur? He never sets foot on the battlefield to occupy with charming the Queen. Have you any idea of the number of titles that coward has won in just a few years? No, not really. Ten! And that Don Juan spends the best part of his time under the Queen's skirts. The bugger must have some hidden talent given all of the gifts she gives him. I understand your point of view. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. There are some rumors about his loose morals. Just, monsieur. Add to that his devouring ambition, if you want my opinion. Playing at lover boy rather than gaining merit for his career? It's a disgrace for any soldier. I understand your point of view. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. You'll be able to check if the hearsay is true over these next few days. I sincerely doubt that. The context does not allow me to give him my trust. I understand your point of view. Would you have any more information about the comforts Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, Monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. My friends, I propose we get started.
First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet, who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur I de Richet. I hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly inefficient. Well, I think that the French army will enter Italy, and that the Vatican will do whatever France demands of it, if the Vatican wants to retain its place. You are joking, I hope. Lord Mortimer, I did not come here to listen to such nonsense. What makes you think that, Monsieur de Richet? Well, Monsieur Bonaparte, here present, has ordered a large number of cannons, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were to be used to keep Italy under control. Come, sir. What a strange idea. I have enough on my plate with issues in Corsica. If you say so. You see, you But Corsica is not where the cannons are to be delivered, is it? Aye, but... Ah, Louis, you are quick-witted. I like... At the risk of displeasing you, my lord, I'd rather follow Sir Gregory. I don't think this is a place for the Order. Louis? No. Let him go, Mr. President. Everyone is free to choose. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project. Despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. I already mentioned it yesterday. Either to you or to someone else. Impossible to tell with you people. Yes, sir. Your yes is not sufficient. Tell the others for crying out loud. Remember to close my window once you've done my room. This isn't Corsica, you know. I'm freezing! Of course, sir. I'll see to it straight away. Good. Proceed. Yes, sir. Monsieur Bonaparte. Sorry, Dorichet. I have no time for traitors such as yourself. I beg your pardon? If you are here, it's because Lord Mortimer agreed to include you. And what's the first thing that you do? You betray him by following Sir Gregory and bending over backwards to turn Washington against him. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was free to vote as I pleased. I didn't realize I had to vote for Lord Mortimer in order to show my gratitude toward him. Hey, he invited me here to come and look for my missing mother during his high society party. I'm sorry, truly sorry. I don't know all your customs yet. It's just common decency that when invited to a man's castle, you don't go and to pee on his boots. Is it too much to ask? I guess it is. Not too shocked. I beg your pardon? About Peru, this morning. I asked you if you weren't too shocked by it all. And yourself? Not too shook up? The only thing that matters to me about that stupid man Peru is the disastrous situation in which it puts us for the conference vote. I wonder why Mortimer even allowed him to roam around the manor armed. He was a veritable public danger. Indeed. You don't seem to be too affected. Tell me. I was wondering. You wouldn't know where to find an armillary sphere, would you? Do you really think this is the right time? Oh, ask Volner. I am sure he will know. What with him being passionate about astronomy, you ought to get on fine together. Leave me now. I... Need to think of a solution. I won't keep you any longer. See you later, Monsieur. Hmm. As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. 
One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. Aren't you afraid our projects for Italy may be discovered before we... Oh. Uh, please excuse us, Louis, but I need to speak with Lord Mortimer in private. No, no. What do you want, Louis? I'm going to have a word with Duke Manuel, but you know him better than I do, I believe. Yes. Avoid any marks of respect and protocol pertaining to his rank. He's not fond of courtly manners. Thank you for the advice, my lord. When are we supposed to vote? The conference resumes tomorrow morning. That leaves little time for the... little favor I spoke to you about. Indeed. I'll go straight away. I shall be leaving you. I would be very grateful if you would let my guests speak. Duke Manuel, you were saying you still had some doubts? Well, you see, the situation has changed since last night. What's going on here, my Lord Duke? You see, I gave it some thought during the night. New arguments have come to light. What do you mean, Duke Manuel? Sir Gregory. I regret to inform you that Spain will not support you in this operation. I vote for. Moreover, in response to arguments brought to my attention, I declare war on France. What? What is he doing? If you think France is afraid of you, you are dreaming. Over ten nations rise against you, young man. And you behave like a yapping little dog? When the French armies are at your door, my Lord Duke, you will change your tune. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project, despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. I don't understand. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Perrault has lost his mind. It's obvious. Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. Monsieur Bonaparte. Louis, once again, bravo for what you did. If it weren't for you, Peru would have blown his brains out. You've got courage. I like this. We just lost a vote for the next conference, and we already had fewer votes than Holm. I must absolutely find a solution. Excuse me, sir, but given recent events, I find it somewhat cavalier to return to your political preoccupations so quickly. Yes, yes, I know. You must find me inhumane. But what can I do? We are here to decide upon the fate of our nations, Louis. It is time you realize what is at stake here. I hold nothing against Monsieur Peru personally, but what concerns me most right now is to not lose sight of the objectives of this meeting. In short, we haven't a minute to lose. I'll leave you now. Just a minute. Can you tell me what Duchess Hillsborough proposed to you on the night of the conference? I was sure you'd ask me that. Not that I hold the Duchesse dear to my heart, but I do nevertheless have some scruples. I have noticed you hovering around her since you arrived, and I only have one piece of advice to give you. Don't forget why she came here. And don't delude yourself. That makes two pieces of advice. Ah, how you love having the last word. Well, I'll leave you now. See you later, sir. Now, Louis. Time is running short, and as I said, I'm in a hurry. I have to go now. I will see you later. Oui. You really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. De Richet, sticking your nose everywhere again. Wow, what's the matter with him? Excuse me, monsieur. I don't follow you. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Why? What are you talking about? I am talking about what you are doing. This conference is going to boost my career. There is no question of me letting you ruin everything. 
I just surprised Piaget and Volner talking. You are about to rob Mortimer! Give me what you took from him, immediately! Let's keep calm, please. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll have to cut this short, quick. This short quick look I don't know what you're going on about and I don't have time for this right now don't think on getting rid of me so easily Derichet. where have you been did Lord Mortimer tell you you could trust me yes but so I'm working for him right now and you're wasting my time with your questions I look if he hasn't taken you into his confidence, then you shouldn't know yet. I'll soon figure out what you are up to. And I am convinced that you have indeed robbed Mortimer. The game is up. Give me what you took from him. You know, this is becoming an obsession with you. Show me what you are carrying, or I will call the servants. Remind me, who did you hear making those alleged charges against me? His Eminence Piaget and Monsieur von Volner were discussing them when I joined them. And remind me, during the conference, which side were His Eminence and Mr. von Volner on? I... Uh, Sir Gregory. But uh, what has that got to do with it? And did it not occur to you for a single instant that they might have been speaking about me in front of you on purpose to manipulate you? I trust them to detect novices who are likely to be taken in, yes. Those sons of whores! Ah! So that's how they see me. Be careful to make sure the conference keeps on going ahead smoothly, though. Please. It would grieve me to have to report you to Lord Mortimer. No, no, of course. I'll make sure those two bastards get what they've got coming. Right. We'll leave it there. I'm glad that things have been cleared up. So, are we finished here? Indeed we are. I shall leave you. That's right. Go play somewhere else. See you later, monsieur. Come on. I have to hurry up and join my mother at the wharf now. I'll have to cut this short, quick. Look, I don't know what you're going on about and I don't have time for this right now. Don't think on getting rid of me so easily, Derichet. Where have you been? I've been in the crypt of the manor. What the hell were you doing there? I was visiting and got lost. I do believe that is the worst lie anyone has ever told me. You are not even qualified to be here among us. You leave me no choice. Come with me. Mikis, what is this? I knew you were up to something. You will thank me later for saving you from this serious error. Damn it! Mother's going to be livid. Damn it! Mother's going to be livid. Do you really think we have a chance of winning? A chance? <laughs> you don't know me very well, Louis. We are going to win. But it only takes one person to vote against us, and we'll have lost. That's true. That's why none of them will. Why? Because I have an asset that they do not. Which is... You!
My friends, prepare yourselves. The conference is about to resume. The time has come to lay down all our cards. I haven't come all this way just to fail so close to the goal. Dear friends, I'd like to thank you for your continued trust and confidence. I admit that during these past few days, there has been much upheaval. I understand you have all been affected by this. Nevertheless, the world doesn't stop turning, and we are in fact on the verge of reshaping the modern world. That is what we are all here for, my lord. Thank you for your enthusiasm, Monsieur Bonaparte. Now you all know what we have to do. I cannot warn you strongly enough. If one of Sir Gregory's guests asks to speak with you, remain on your guard. It is highly likely that he will try to rally as many supporters to his cause as he can. Now, please, go and get some rest before the conference begins, which won't be long now. Louis, stay with me a moment, won't you? Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Monsieur Bonaparte. Leave me. Thank you. I have no time to spare. 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 Duke Manuel Godoy. Monsieur Bonaparte. Ah, oh, excuse me, I was expecting someone else. Monsieur Godoy, do you have a moment? Your timing's awkward, Dorishi. I'm expecting someone. I haven't time. Please leave me. Very well. I won't insist. Hmm. Looks like he only wants to speak to Bonaparte. I know what I have to do if I want to speak to him. Monsieur Bonaparte. Louis, do you want something? Yes, for you to test the Duke's loyalty, since he'll only speak to you. Well... Whatever it is, I haven't the time. The conference will shortly begin, and I want to be focused. Uh, sorry. Come back and see me afterwards. I see I haven't much choice. Seeing as Godoy will only talk to Bonaparte, and Bonaparte will talk to no one, I have no other choice but to borrow his body. Nothing personal here, Napoleon. Look, I'm sorry. This conference is of utmost importance to me, and I should like to be prepared for it. Concentrate, Louis. You don't mind if I sit down, do you? I don't want to fall flat on my face when my spirit passes inside you. No, I don't think you've understood, Derichet. Link into his thoughts, Louis. Come on. I said I did not want to be disturbed. That's it. I sense something. What word in Leave Me Alone do you not understand? Come on, just keep going and... Get inside his mind. Now. Too bad for you. You can't say that I haven't. Thank you very much for the loan of this body, monsieur. Right. Let's not waste any more time, Louis. Godoy is waiting. 
Ah, there you are at last, Bonaparte. My lord Duke. What a typically French attitude. Come, you let's are not... 20 minutes late. Without the least excuse. I am risking a lot, monsieur. You seem to forget. Uh, please excuse me. Well, what did you want to see me about? Hmm. So, let's see whose side he's really on. I wanted to be sure. You are still going to vote for Mortimer, as planned, yes? Mortimer? What the devil are you talking about, Bonaparte? I am on Holmes' side, and I intend to vote against Mortimer's project. What on earth is wrong with him? He seems very odd. My Lord Duke, I never once dreamed of you playing on both sides of the fence. But uh, I was given to understand that you and uh, Lord Mortimer do have a few interests in common. But I... I don't know what on earth you are talking about. Lord Mortimer and myself may agree on a number of subjects, but I am and shall always remain loyal to Sir Gregory. You see, there is no reason to think that I could ever side with Mortimer. Oh, that's a pity. He was going to make you an offer. What are you talking about? Make yourself clear. I do not understand you. This doesn't seem like the way Mortimer normally proceeds. I'll know if he's lying or not by what he has to offer. Come on, my Lord Duke. We both know very well what we are talking about. I thank you for not wasting my time. I never dreamed of it, Monsieur. I have a fair idea as to your presence here, but for some reason... something doesn't seem quite right. I... I am somewhat lost, to tell the truth. <laughs> And this just isn't like you. I wonder if... Uh, it really is you, in fact. What? You're just fishing around because you're the one who's changed sides. What? What on earth are you talking about? You're working for Holm. Admit it. No, I'm not. Don't be ridiculous. He's asked you to flush out the traitors in his team, hasn't he? Of course he hasn't. Admit it. I'm sure he's lying. I cannot make out what it is, but something is very wrong here. I will not fall into a trap. Are you joking? Upon my honor, I urge you to believe that I am not the sort to play on both sides of the fence, monsieur. Very well, very well. There is no point getting on your high horse. If you are really working for Mortimer, why did he task you to question me like this? I do not understand. If he really, really is here on behalf of Mortimer, all he would have to do is tell me the code we agreed upon. Whatever happens, if he doesn't say hummingbird, it means I've fallen into a trap. Right. I think we've wasted enough time here. I could not agree more. Hummingbird. Did you... Pardon? You heard me. Hummingbird. At last. Heavens above. Why did you not tell me before? I didn't think I would need to. Imbecile! Someone could have caught us. Listen, I'll take your word for it, but tell Mortimer that he's making me run too great a risk. I already gave him my approval, and we agreed not to speak about it on the island. Just imagine for a minute if Holm had caught us. You might not know what he is capable of, but I certainly do. It would be the end of me. The bastard. He really is a traitor. Uh, please excuse me, Duke Manuel, but that wasn't the intention. I shall go and reassure Lord Mortimer about the vote, and uh, I promise to avoid you running any more risks. I hope so. Now please, leave me. We must not be seen together. Ah, there you are at last, Bonaparte. My Lord Duke. What a typically French attitude. Come, you let's are not... twenty minutes late. Without the least excuse. I am risking a lot, monsieur. You seem to forget. Uh, please excuse me. Well, what did you want to see me about? Hmm. So, let's see whose side he's really on. I wanted to be sure. You are still going to vote for Mortimer, as planned, yes? Mortimer? What the devil are you talking about, Bonaparte? I am on Holmes' side, and I intend to vote against Mortimer's project. What on earth is wrong with him? He seems very odd. Come now, my Lord Duke. You can't fool me. We both know that you will follow Lord Mortimer when it comes to the vote. My young friend, 
I do not know what's wrong with you, but you are out of your mind. I came here upon Sir Gregory's invitation, and I intend to bury this ludicrous idea of selling Louisiana. You see, there is no reason to think that I could ever side with Mortimer. Oh, that's a pity. He was going to make you an offer. What are you talking about? Make yourself clear. I do not understand you. This doesn't seem like the way Mortimer normally proceeds. I'll know if he's lying or not by what he has to offer. Well, Lord Mortimer was willing to offer you a small fortune as compensation for the risks involved. He wants to buy me? What kind of a man does he take me for? Damn it! This doesn't seem to be the right approach. Please excuse me. I must have misunderstood. I hope so. Because I am not the kind of man to be tempted by any sum of money, monsieur. No matter how generous. Bonaparte, I really don't know what you're playing at, but you seem completely off track. For the last time, I shall follow Sir Gregory for the Louisiana vote, and you can tell Mortimer that I'm not the kind to break my word. Understood, but I... I... have nothing more to say. Please, leave me now. It's time to get going. My Lord Duke, my apologies for being late. What? A Frenchman who apologizes? Decidedly, my stay here has never ceased to uncover surprises. So, have you any more information about Derichet? What do you mean? Are you joking? We agreed you would check to see if Derichet really has changed sides. Oh, that. Yes, indeed. It appears that he's been brought over to Sir Gregory's side. A traitor! He pushed me into turning against Sir Gregory to finally follow him himself! If you want my opinion, he must be hiding something. The villain. I was hoping he was just absent or busy snooping around all over the place in search of his mother. No, it would seem he really has joined, Sir Gregory. I have a bad feeling about this. I know what you mean. I wager he knows Mortimer is going to lose the vote. Don't you think we ought to think about ourselves and make sure we don't end up on the wrong side? What? You would be prepared to leave Mortimer as well? What do you say? I refuse to be made a laughing stock. If that is the case, I am voting for Holm as well. I think you are right, my Lord Duke. After all, Sir Gregory was my first choice. Exactly. But until then, not a word to anyone for safety's sake. I think it's preferable. Yes, you're right. And we'd better not stay together. Someone might see us. Good luck, my Lord Duke. Likewise. It's time to get going. What's your opinion of Duke Manuel? Duke Manuel won't be supporting us. How dare he! If it weren't for me, he wouldn't be where he is today. I had to trick him in order to make sure. I passed inside Napoleon so that he would talk to me. Congratulations, Louis! I see you're not one to stop at half measures. I pretended that I was only checking he was still working for Mortimer. And he confessed? He was suspicious right to the end, but yes, he ended up giving himself away and conceded he was working for your brother. The scoundrel! So, do we agree? Agreed. Let's return to our places now. You're right. Hmm. What were they talking about? Louis, a moment of your time, please. Yes, monsieur. What can I do for you? I would like you to hear me out without interrupting. It's in your interest. You are in a perilous situation, and I want to avoid you becoming a laughingstock. What exactly are you talking about? The reason why we are all here. You might think you can win, but... Indeed. It looks that way, doesn't it? Well, think again. You don't know everything. In actual fact, all of Sir Gregory's team is working for Mortimer. If you vote for Holm, Mortimer will never forgive you. And I can assure you that he has taken down far tougher than you. Are you threatening me? Not me, Louis. But you are the only one who hasn't turned against Sir Gregory. Join us. Vote with us if you do not want to feel the wrath of Mortimer alone. Is that all? That's all, yes. I just wanted to warn you. Now you are free to vote where your conscience leads you. Good luck. So, 
He's the one who's been persuading them all to turn back. I just gotta hope that Holmes managed to pull off his conjuring trick. Otherwise, Bonaparte's right. I'll be the only one voting against Mortimer, and therefore, the only one to face the consequences. I must say, Sir Gregory, you are beset by bad luck. Indeed. One would think that I am hounded by ill fortune. Good. I think we can begin. You will vote in turn on the question that interests us today. Are you for or against the transfer of ownership of Louisiana from Spain to France? Napoleon? For. Mr. Von Volner? I deserve a great destiny, and I will let nothing, nor no one, stand in the way of my dream. You found the lance. I don't know where to begin, and, and time is running out. It's hard for me to help. Where did you last see it? Well, Napoleon took it from me. That's where I would start. Yes, you're right. He didn't know what it was. He might still have it. You had better check. Make haste. You really must lay your hands on it, Louis. An object that touched the blood of Christ. It's not the kind of thing you come across every day. Think hard. I have faith in you. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Monsieur Bonaparte is not available. I must ask you to please... I shan't beat around the bush, my good fellow. I have every reason to believe that Monsieur Bonaparte has betrayed your master's trust. But I still need to find the proof by inspecting his personal effects. So I'd be much obliged if you would stand out of my way. I say, sir, that is a grave accusation. My master knows and appreciates Monsieur Bonaparte. What's the matter? You seem to be a bit troubled all of a sudden. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary? I... Yes, indeed, sir. I remember being surprised by... an object. I found something in Napoleon's effects. A lance head. Just what I thought. Well done, my friend. Your master will be proud of you. I shall tell him that you... Have you a name? Well, it, it, it's just that... A number? Maybe a letter? <laughs> no matter. He'll be proud. Anyway. I must lay my hands on that lance and give it back to Lord Mortimer. Keep an eye on him while I search, and don't hesitate to knock him out should he wake up. Uh, very well, sir. Holy Lance. Luckily, Napoleon couldn't put it back in its place. As Mortimer had planned, Napoleon Bonaparte sold Louisiana to the United States after purchasing it from Spain. Bonaparte continued his political and military ascension until he proclaimed himself emperor. He went on to invade a large part of Central Europe. The legend of Napoleon persisted after his death, 
conferring on the emperor the role of Messiah for France. Napoleon Bonaparte continued his political and military rise until his self-proclamation as emperor. His excessive ambition would cost the lives of 1,700,000 Frenchmen and leave France poorer and weaker than ever before. Deported and imprisoned by the British on St. Helena Island, he died on the 5th of May, 1821, as an exile to general indifference.